and we can get started. So I hope everyone had a wonderful Mother Mother's Day weekend. Um, and it was a beautiful Sunday yesterday. Uh, today we're going to be talking about engagement, inbound and outbound engagement. And we have some questions that have come in. I'm going to keep it short, informative, um, as per usual with our uh, Q&A social skills series that have been so, you know, received in a very positive light. I'm happy that everyone's enjoying the series and everything that we're doing here to keep you informed about social media during the COVID crisis. And our series is going to come to a pause on May 20th, as it's our last scheduled session. And I'll give you a little bit of an update with that as to what's happening with the social skills series and then a major event that's taking place um, on Memorial Day Monday hosted by social behavior so let me just get my notes pulled up here there we go and if you don't mind give me one second I'm adjusting my computer screen because it keeps sliding back there we go all right so today we're talking about engagement inbound outbound engagement and engagement is so important a lot of people really forget about engagement when it comes to social media and they fail to realize that engagement controls the algorithm you hear about this algorithm all the time and people say oh um you know the algorithm changed, the algorithm changed, this is why I'm not doing well. No, the reason why you're not doing well on social media is because you're just posting stuff and you are not really focusing on engagement. So engagement controls the algorithm. And if you don't know what the algorithm is, the algorithm is a series of formulas that calculate um, that that are bridged together in order to form a, a calculation that in this case uh, with regards to social media as we're talking about it determines how you will do or perform on that particular platform so engagement controls the algorithm and there's two types of engagement there's inbound engagement and outbound engagement so I'll pull this up here um, on our chat notes just so we have this pulled up and then I'll touch on inbound engagement and outbound engagement and we'll go um, into questions. So again, I'm gonna keep this very, very short and sweet. So just for our notes here, um, we've got engagement which controls the algorithm. We have inbound engagement and outbound engagement. And so inbound engagement is comments messages that you're getting on your social media platform now where does this happen it happens on every single platform you can engage in every single platform that is the beauty about social media is is engagement right because we have access to one another via comments and messages now that's the inbound form of engagement outbound engagement happens on the platforms when you as a company, a business, or user have direct access to another user. So as a business, I am managing, let's say for example, the social media Instagram account for social behavior, I can go and find users via hashtag, for example, Houston business owner, and then go directly to somebody that owns a business. So now I can initiate a B2B conversation if I owned a makeup line and I was managing, for example, a makeup line account, I could find users that use makeup by, you know, hashtag. Um, I'll get into how we're going to engage in just a little bit. But, but basically, social media gives me the platform now as a business. I can speak directly to my consumer. So a lot of B2B, a lot of B2C connections happening here via the outbound engagement. So... This is what's happening in that in those platforms, all right? Now, without going in too deep about, you know, the inbound, outbound, well, the inbound engagement is pretty, pretty simple, which is just, you're getting comments, you're getting messages, those need to be addressed, period. You need to be willing to spend around an hour, at least an hour on your 
social media profiles, personal or business, in order for you to have some traction. One of the pages that we work on is actually my second startup business, and it's Brew Chew Treats. And, you know, it's, it's a business that's a passion project. I've, it's, you know, um, generates revenue. It's a passion project for me, but it also, we don't have like a huge budget for social media. So we rely on engagement to keep the profiles active. And because we've grown this account with dog lovers and the right type of, of following, this page, we only spend three hours a week engaging on it. And this page generates a lot of organic engagement because we've done so well at kind of, you know, um, farming our following and making sure that it's very, very targeted. And that's what we do with all of our customers. But in this case, I'm, I'm outlining to you that you need to spend at least an hour a day on your engagement but if your page is just extremely curated and you've got a very niche audience, you will likely, based on, based on the following, you will likely perform well even if you do as little as three hours a week. So social behavior clients, when they come on board with us, we do have some tiered packages. And one of the options is that you get three hours a week of engagement, five hours a week. Some we do seven hours a week and some we do four um, two hours a day uh, of engagement just because, for example, some businesses that are so B2C and we know that their customers are living on Instagram, we are just spending two hours a day looking for that particular person and starting conversations with them. So I'm sure a lot of you have been on the receiving end of, of inbound engagement. We at Social Behavior have a dedicated team. We have three team members dedicated to engagement only. This is what they do. This is such an important part of, of growing a social media account and nourishing that relationship. So we definitely encourage you to, like I said, at least an hour a day. So that is the outbound engagement. So required, I'm gonna type in here into our box, one hour a day suggested. Now, this even happens for me. I mean, if I fall off of my Instagram and I don't engage with it, you know, I will definitely start seeing a decline in my own personal algorithm and in all of our businesses. If we stop engaging, we will see that drop. Now, technically we are not always working on weekends. We do encourage our customers to take over the accounts and do that as well, but we try to keep the engagement alive. And if you, are, if you have a healthy engagement habit, and you don't engage for you know a couple of days then it's not going to kill your engagement you're you're still very favorable to the algorithm however if you stop engaging for seven days then it's basically like starting back up you're starting the click farm again so you've got to go in there and do it at least once a day now what do i mean by well what do i do for that one hour a day i'm talking nourish your inbound engagement and do some outbound engagement. So in the inbound engagement, you probably get comments, you probably get messages. If you don't, we need to look at some other issues because you should be posting enough and having enough activity on your social media to generate you know, um, comments and engagement. Now, when you do post, we, we like to call the type of content that you put out um, content that has a wow factor, content that triggers a reaction. Because if you're just posting content that says, you know, happy Mother's Day and just, just a regular cookie cutter card, it's not going to trigger a, a reaction. We want to kind of have meaningful content and high engaging content and content that it's going to have a wow factor and, and give people a reason to leave a comment or send a message. So with that, you're able to now respond to that comment and respond to that message. And that is how you engage on the inbound side. On the outbound side, engagement can happen on all the platforms, like I said, but you need to define what type of engagement do you want? What, what type of communications do you want to spark on social media? And do you want them to be B2B or B2C? And based on that, that's how you will come to know if you are going to be engaging by 
different types of metrics. So the metrics that we use here at Social Behavior, this is kind of when we, when we meet with a client, we put together a very thorough engagement strategy that we then turn over to our engagement specialists and we say, hey, this is the, the format, the formula that we want you to follow. So, you know, we then hit the ground running. And as we are doing this, we start to learn the behavior of our, of the beat of the client, the customer on the other side or, or the business on the other side. So let me give you some points that we follow on our engagement strategy on the outbound side. We look at locations which, or geotags. We look at hashtags. We look at, um, give me a second, hashtags. We look at um, the demographic. So who they are. So I misspelled hashtag there. Okay, let me fix that. Can't fix it, but I can just submit it correctly. So locations, geotags, demographics, hashtags, that's what we're looking at when we start to build these strategies and we start to, to determine where we're going to find that person. So I'll give you an example of a, since I already talked about Bruce Retreats, I'll give you an example of the dog treat company. So who is out there uh, with dogs on Instagram? people that are using hashtag dog mom, hashtag dogs of Instagram, hashtag huskies. I mean, I can't stress this enough. So we're going to, and where are they hanging out at? You know, are they going to dog parks? Are they going to, to dog festivals? Are they, how do we find these dogs? And how do we know if they're going to be, if they're going to be a good fit for us, you know? So again, the dog population on Instagram, we basically saying the human population on Instagram, it's very, very broad, but that's a great, also a great thing for us because it means that we can cast a very broad net and get, tap into these um, dog personalities on social media. So I'm just going to go ahead and share my screen here, right? So let's say that I'm working on this account and I'm actually going to be posting um again the happy mother's day we showed that we had dog mom's day national dog mom's day which is the day before actual mother's day and we posted a picture of you know our co-founder rachel and her dogs and then myself and my dog so we posted this and it got 101 reactions and we had a a comment from a verified maltese account that this dog is actually a verified dog uh, because she's actually a star. So she's been on TV and this is just social media, guys. This dog has 221,000 followers. So this dog comments on our photo. We've got a lot of engagement happening here um, on this page. And let's say that I'm doing the, the outbound engagement side for this page. I'm going to try to look for dogs that would enjoy our treats so i would go to hashtag dog life hashtag doggo and here in dog life there's 23 million posts very very saturated instagram world but based on on this tag these are the top nine instagram will always show you the top nine images or visuals associated with this particular tag and then you can move on into here and look at what the most recent is so this person has zero views obviously they just posted a tiktok video of a dog 37 seconds ago it's got no views but it will in a minute and then i can now go ahead and engage with it and be like oh so cute i'm not on the breach retreats account right now so i'm not going to do that but you know i would start to comment here now I, it is also recommended that you interact with the top nine and you start working your way into these tags, uh, into the locations, into the demographics. If it's, you know, I'm specifically looking for the person that makes the decisions in this dog buying household. So if I look up hashtag dog mom, there's 8 million tags with this hashtag. And now I can start interacting with people that are using the hashtag dog mom. Now, this is a business 
using it for their business purposes. But if I scroll over to the next one, this is clearly a lady and her dog. And so I would just comment here, we think you'd love our treats. Oh, by the way, you know, great page and go into her profile, maybe look around, leave a couple more comments, start to follow her and start building your engagement. This is the outbound engagement and this is how it happens. When this happens, the user on the other end of the screen will start to engage back with you. And what is happening there is you are now triggering the algorithm to work in your favor. And now you are growing your followers, you are getting the comments, you are getting the likes, and the next time you post, your post will perform better than it did the last time. And this is kind of a repeat trend that needs to happen every single day for at least an hour a day for you to have the proper uh, engagement on your profiles. Now, with all of that being said, um, you know, this is the, the sample account that I chose to go with. Let me pull up some questions. If you have any already kind of drumming up, go ahead and put them in the chat box or the Q&A section of this um zoom and then let me get to the questions that were submitted via dms here for social behavior so we've got some questions now what are small steps to increase engagement Brittany? okay you're joining us right here so those stops, uh, small steps are definitely um what i've told you about the outbound engagement that's definitely useful for your for you to increase engagement. Now, I will tell you one more thing that uh, I didn't touch on, and this is kind of an immediate engagement, is when you post, and let me dial it back a little bit. So I started on social media about 14 years ago. Hold on. Yeah, okay. So 14 years ago, and I started working at a private members only um country club but what we offered wasn't golf we had a collection of exotic cars so i started posting pictures on social media with ferraris and lamborghinis things that are so standard now like everybody's doing it and i mean you've seen all the documentaries people will try to rent time in a private jet just to get their instagram moment well back then there wasn't even instagram this was i wasn't doing it for any other reason other than this was my job but people were thrilled to see that they engaged with it. And I noticed that those posts used to go crazy on LinkedIn and Facebook. And I'm talking about 14 years ago, I'm just doing my job, but it triggered a lot of conversation. It triggered a lot of inbound engagement. Hey, what are you doing? What's this? How do I get in? How do I join? So people were asking all the right questions. And what ended up happening was when I was just regularly, when I was doing my regular life stuff, going to the gym, eating out, um cooking people weren't really that engaging with my posts so i was like hold on why aren't people engaging well i'm not in a yellow ferrari so i'm not you know waving a flag for attention or you know having that wow factor content so what i would do was i started immediately sending that content if it was my regular live stuff because i noticed that i didn't want to decrease my engagement like this is 14 years ago before I knew I would ever be doing this. So this is kind of like what I'm figuring out um, so long ago, not knowing that I would be here kind of, you know, running a whole business around this type of stuff. So what I started doing back then was, was messaging people my posts as soon as I posted them. And I noticed that the more that people engaged with it immediately, the more comments and likes that I was going to get. So I started sending that out to my friends um, right as soon as I posted. So that is actually something that's proven, that's a proven engagement tool now, which is why little pods exist, where people just join in a pool together and start supporting one another's accounts as soon as the posts go live. Because if you get engagement within one hour of posting, and within that one hour you've got a one hour window to really make your post go far you will uh start to beat the algorithm so the algorithm will work in your favor 
So within one hour of posting, you wanna make sure that you send all your posts to friends, family, you don't have to join a little exclusive pod or a private group of people that are gonna engage with your post, but definitely I recommend that you at least send it internally to a few friends that can support you. And then once you start getting all of that engagement within the first hour, you will then kind of, I guess, you know, end up higher on the algorithm. So that's a small step to increase engagement along with all of these outbound. So what are some do's and don'ts of incorporating businesses with personal? Brittany, if you could rephrase that question, what are some do's and don'ts of incorporating business with personal? Um, rephrase that question for me and I'd be happy to answer it. Now, another question from Brittany is, should you incorporate your business page with your personal page? Oh, let me know if I'm getting it right, Brittany, because I know that you're on this call. If you mean, if you mean turning your personal Instagram page into a business page, let me know if you mean that so I can offer you some insight on that. Um, how come some better, some photos do better than others? That's a great question. But again, um, it all depends on the visual, the quality of the photo, and if it's a wow factor photo, you know, people want, we're, we're saturated with content coming in through our feeds all day long. So people want that high energy wow factor content. And if you are not making people stop and scroll, then the content might be the problem. But another problem could be your, your, the time that you're posting. So if you have a business profile on Instagram, you can look at the settings and you can It'll tell you what time your audience is mostly on there. You want to kind of look to that as a guidance for when you should be posting because that will tell you when your audience is already present. And there's also another app called when to post. So another question um, that came in is from Ashley Silva. What recommendations would you have for small business trying to grow their engagement or opening up again after COVID? So if it's a small business, one of the things that we've been doing with our clients are, are putting together influencer campaigns because we're relying on our local community to support small businesses. This is why we had Danielle and Grundy join us last week because we talked about the importance of the local influencer community, getting behind these businesses to boost them and, and get them reopened. So I definitely think that um, putting together an, an engagement strategy or a influencer campaign would be great for restaurants coming out of COVID and reopening again. You definitely want to get as many um, people to kind of be doing all of the talking. So bring them in, offer them something, and make sure that you set those terms and conditions in exchange of you know them coming in for a visit with you. We've had a great success and a great run with this for our client. Chicken Cone in the Heights, we send about um, three influencers there a day. And it sounds like, you know, well, maybe you can't afford three people, but figure out a comp that works for you and figure out something that works for you so that you can have three people coming in. Maybe it doesn't have to be if you do like a, a service that's a premium service. Maybe you just offer them to post on your behalf and you send them a $5 Starbucks digital gift card, buy them a coffee something so hope that answers that ashley okay next question from kelly is should you engage should you engage with people who you don't want to engage with like sometimes i get comments from random shops like hey we'd love to work for you dm blah 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 or people who live in the middle of nowhere and you have no idea how they found you well this is a funny one because the answer is yeah when those spammy people soliciting you to work with them those are just spam. They're, they're either robots or they're hired there. They're not real people. So it's an unauthentic comment. But the thing is that you could just still like it and reply and just say thank you and, and move on. The reason why is because that comment that sits, that, that made it there and you're replying to it, it does help with your algorithm. I get annoyed so many times that like I'm trying to to get engagement from women or women that are like-minded or professional women and men. But I get all, you know, a lot of men that are just on there just messaging women and I get annoyed at the same time when they leave a comment like, 
oh, hey, pretty, you know, I want to be offended and I want to just delete and not engage with it. And sometimes I'm just like, okay, like I got to keep it moving because this is for engagement. So it is, it is a battle for me. Um, and to deal with those, hey, we want to collab with you. You know, a lot of times people will, will troll your page and will sit on your page because if you are getting a lot of engagement, they will just troll your page to write the engagement from you. Now I'm going into like the third dimension of engagement on your Instagram page. But basically what you want to be mindful of, you know, do you want to engage with them? No. But if they're just leaving a neutral comment, they're not trolling you or using your page for clout, then just like it and say thanks and keep it moving as long as it's not offensive. Honestly, it is at the end of the day um, helping you. So, so I hope I've answered that question. I know that can kind of be annoying um, having those spammy comments and, and stuff like that. So uh, again, put together an engagement strategy. When we work with a client, we figure out, all right, who do we want to get in touch with? Is it a customer? Is it a business? And then based on that, we go from, um, we, we start laying out an engagement strategy and figuring out where that audience is. Because, you know, I'm talking about Instagram and engaging as a B2C, but on LinkedIn, there's still a lot of B2B engagement that can also be done. And there are different organic tools that are available for that which are the search tools on the LinkedIn platform, or you can get a upgraded enhanced profile like the sales navigator and start engaging with people that way. So with that being said, that is the outbound and inbound engagement kind of social skills session. It is engagement has so many layers, so many moving parts. So I hope that I've answered your questions and been resourceful uh, on today's session. If you guys have any other questions for me, please drop them in the Q&A box. I'll wait a few seconds. And then while I have you, I will also go ahead and tell you about an exciting event that we're having on May 25th. So we are actually having a Memorial Day scavenger hunt. And we have partnered up with a few of our clients to put together a thousand dollars in prizes. And we are going to leave these prices at five locations in Houston on Memorial Day Monday at 11 a.m. So this is a link to the event. Let me send you a short link so you can remember. And this event is going to um, take place, um, you can register on, on the link here. It is going to be, a, we encourage social distancing. The stay at home order is supposed to be extended. If it's not, we'll make this event fully virtual. We'll turn it over into a full virtual format. But read the instructions, read the rules, register to sign up. We're gonna be dropping more details in there soon. And I put the link here uh, on the event chat. I hope you can open that up but it's going to be a very fun event. And then also tomorrow at noon, Tuesday, May 12th at 12 p.m., I will be going live for an hour talking about Facebook for business. So that is the second event that I just dropped into our chat. Paula, can you let me know if those are clickable? And, and there on the chat, let me know if you can see that. And okay, cool. Okay. So thank you so much for letting me know that. And yeah, so tomorrow at 12 p.m. I'll be doing a Facebook Live. This is intended for young professionals that just want to tune in. I'm going to be talking about Facebook, business pages, group communities, posting, ads. I'm talking just all things Facebook for business. So tune in. I hope to see you there tomorrow at noon. Click on both of those events and RSVP for our Memorial Day scavenger hunt. So thank you guys once again. If you have any questions, you can email me or message us on social media, on social behaviors, uh, social media platforms, or via uh, any of our any of our portals. We are very very accessible. So just message me with any questions regarding social media, and if I uh, don't hear from you before then, I hope to see you here at the same time on Wednesday afternoon. Thank you so much for joining the Social Skills Series and I will see you soon.